All right, there we go. Gotta love Pulse Audio. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're from. Welcome to the Sunday Linux Coffee Clutch. Yes, I'm on late again. Forgot to hit the programming on the coffee pot this morning. No, Derek, I won't get a Keurig. I had those before. They suck. Not worth the money. The amount of money you spend on coffee for a cup is unbelievable. So, welcome everybody. I hope uh, your Sunday morning, afternoon, evening is going okay. Today we're in a coffee shop. Thanks to Chris Neeling, who was one of the first to send me a coffee uh, shop picture. How are we doing today? Let's see who's in the room. So Qualls was first. I got your picture today, Qualls. And this Razor, he wants a medal. How you doing, Razor? Johan, hello. And the one, the only, the thunder from down under. Vince, glad you made it. Hope you're feeling better, buddy. I know you said you were a little bit under the weather. Leo man. Cubicle Nate, what's up, Nate Stir? And Derek the Cure Graham. And no, I didn't start on time. I go downstairs. Okay, I got took my shower. I got like a good five minutes to go. And I look at my coffee pot and I go, damn. No coffee in it. I know I set it up last night. In my defense, I was kind of beat. My back was really bothering me yesterday. What else we got here? Razor Steve's putting on his peppermint mankini. Eh, boy, I would. It would go to like a hundred thumbs down. That would be an uh, engagement, wouldn't it? Oh boy, you guys are talking about Arch. Hey, Explorer, how you doing? Glad you can make it. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, Nate, I, Nate says, I will have to say, I do not like Keurigs either. They are expensive and not so great on the environment. Yes, I am a bit nutty about that, and I, I agree. The Keurigs are quick, fancy. Um, you spend a lot of money for a lot of nothing. We went through two of them because they just decide to leak. They may have gotten better. My in-laws, <clears throat> my wife's sister-in-law, you know, it's all they've had is a Keurig and for years. They've been through 10 different types, I think. Um, I guess they're great if you're single, but I have a Hamilton Beach that does a pot of coffee or does a single coffee. And I think that was about $34. And you can actually do Keurig pods in it too, so. But I prefer, you know, a, a, a pot of coffee and that DJ where? Yeah, Nasik, I said the time for 805, I'm still late. Whatever. You guys are here. Thank you very much. Yeah, just like Lennox, uh, uh, Nate, if uh, Keurig works for you, go with it. I just think, you know, um, for the money, you spend more for coffee than you do if you buy the bag. Because when they're on sale... <clears throat> We'll say an average, so I like my Javalia, right? Regularly seven ninety nine a bag. Good sale, they go on sale for four ninety nine. So the Keurig cups they're usually on average a dozen to a box. Same price, seven ninety nine, they go down to four ninety nine. You get twelve cups of coffee for four ninety nine. So you pay for the convenience and then you gotta throw in the landfill. Leo Men says he used to have a Hamilton Beach. The water fed to this. It it did. We we and we uh uh had one that it did it did leak on the pot side. 
but uh we originally bought that one from qvc and they replaced it so but uh then i seen a whole pallet at the local sam's club one day and they had them for a, a good price so i'm thinking of buying one for work because i'm like one of the few coffee drinkers at work and I don't want to sit, let my, let my pot of coffee sit there all day while I'm the one that drinks it. But whatever gets you your coffee is for you. Daisy Lee, if you're there, thanks for subscribing. Just got the message. Hey, Spin Viking. Does a local pawn shop got stuck with a few Keurig machines? How fast they become redundant? Yeah. Yeah, Derek, they do make, he says they resell, they make reusable pods. Um, and I had learned how to do that too. It just doesn't do the same. It, it's just not quite the same. But thank you, Daisy. Daisy is new. Thank you for stopping by. So do you use Linux, Daisy, or are you just stopping by to say hello? So the Sunday Linux Coffee Clutch, what is this about if it's your first time like Daisy? Well, we sit here and we talk about, we have a coffee and conversation on Linux, tech, and more. Now, it's all not all Linux. We do talk about Macs. Uh, we talk about uh, Windows, um, not fully. I know I'm not a Mac user. I do have Windows still around the house because my son and my wife use it. So I have to stay up on it. Um, well, thank you, Daisy. Appreciate it. And we talk about tech, you know, uh, old tech, new tech, reuse tech, and more. And more is about coffee. <laughs> Or food. Wait till we get to the food subject. Johan says, Senseo Pods uh, fresh coffee every time. And then Qual says, or beer. I know you mentioned Bud. Dude, I don't know how you drink Budweiser. Sorry, Budweiser. That's For me, that's headache beer. Yes, Nate, if Alan Pope shows up, we'll talk ThinkPads. Pancakes. In fact, I have to either make pancakes or waffles when I'm done with the stream today. One of um, my wife's friends that she works with at the library, she does um, quilting in that, and she made she makes baby blankets for uh, uh, my niece, uh, my nephew, and his wife are going to have a baby. But she also makes her own syrup, and she made a blueberry syrup, and my son can't wait to try it. So I have to make pancakes. Uh, waffles aren't that bad, Nate. I got a nice waffle maker. It's the same, you know, you use pancake mix, but you just add more oil to it. And then the little secret, add some vanilla to the batter. And then you'll have McDonald's pancakes. But that's what we do here on the Sunday Linux Coffee Clock. We talk about all sorts of stuff. It's just a free form, you know, chat. We're getting caught up on things during the week now I, you know admittedly i do i have not been doing much in the lennox world uh you, you know you would think that with all the COVID stuff and that there would be extra time but my wife's schedules got changed my son's schedule got changed uh, with school and i don't have the free time that i did before to put things together so this is pretty much what I do once in a while, I'll pop on during the week. Um, I'm going to attempt to get back to it. So Nate says, oh, wait, waffles are more work to make look pretty? Not really. <laughs> Tasik says the <laughs> Ibn Weiser. <laughs> Processing plant is just a mile away from me. I can smell the scents from here. Nice. Razor, you might be going back to work in three weeks. Yeah, the joy of being an essential worker whenever we're out of work.
um, especially here in the States. I hope everybody in the areas that the virus is rearing its ugly head stay safe. We don't try to talk too much about it. Hey, Silent Robot. Glad to see you there. How you doing, Mark? Doing well? Yeah, family and I are safe. The best can be, you know, both my wife and I are essential workers, so we're out there every day in the retail world. Still got these people that you know, won't wear masks. And where most businesses are, you know, you don't have a mask, you don't come in, not our business. We're told not to approach anybody. So. Uh, what font? It is um, probably not. <clears throat> it's Bodani. Um, I ran across that font a couple years ago, and I just, I don't know, I really liked it, so I use it. Um, I don't know if it's... Um, <clears throat> Legal. But it's good to see you silent. Uh, how you been doing on um, Salient? I probably agree with you, Nate. Nate says, I don't know. I would rather get exposed to a virus in the summer rather than the winter. I feel like I kick things better in the summer, just saying. Yeah, but sometimes when you get sick in the summer, the heat, you know, you're sick and then the heat. Not a, not a good combination, but it does get a little bit worse. Um, we're moving along with plans to, uh, for immunizations for flu shots. Um, I don't know if this year people will get more, you know, even won't do anything for, for COVID. Will people do more flu shots just in case? I don't know. But all in all, stay safe. Um, stay healthy the best you can. Uh, you know, uh, I, you know, we can go back and forth on herd immunity and all that kind of stuff, but this thing is still rolling along and we just need to be safe. You know? You just uh, Nate says he just lays in the sun when it's sick, sweat it out, could be all in my head. Hey, you know what? Whatever makes you feel better. Just like if that Keurig makes you a pot of coffee that you like, go with it. Otherwise, you know, um, I think I've mentioned it before. Years ago, I had this um, uh, employee. She was in her 60s, sprightly old lady. She was funnier than hell, but every day she took a, a, a teaspoon of Vicks Formula 44. In her mind, that kept her from being sick. Now, we know it doesn't keep you from being sick, it's, you know, but it worked for her. So placebo can work, right? Vince says last month his flu cases were down 98% compared to the same time last year because of lockdown. What's up, Mitchell? Mr. Valentino. Nasik never had a flu shot, never get whatever's going around. Good luck with that. Well, it probably doesn't hit the antisocial much. Ooh. <laughs> Hey, Steven Anderson. That's right. You're over on the West Coast, 627 for you. Coffee, coffee. Yeah, I was late getting my coffee. I forgot to hit my programmer on my coffee pot. I knew I was working up here. I'm like, I should be smelling coffee by now, but... St. Raphael, how you doing? Adam Grubbs, what did you stumble onto? You might want to just look, slowly turn, and walk out the door again.
better, better ever been one of those situations you walk in and go I shouldn't be in here just turn around and walk right out oh coffee oh oh So I saw you guys were again talking about some arch earlier. Vince, Vince is still on. Um, yeah, what are you on again, Vince? Eric Dubois, uh, Arco. You're still on Arco, right? Hey, Sky Bear. Good morning. Yeah, Arco. That's your 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 distro of choice. I'm still on Peppermint as they brew Peppermint 11. Still no word when that's going to come out. <laughs> so the dog is still asleep, but you're up. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, oh, every, every Sunday you walk in and not sure what's going on, Kurt. <laughs> Yeah, so it looks like I'm on Pop Store. So Chris Kelly from um, the Biddle Group was one of the first to send me a coffee shop picture. Um, let me see if he I remember if he told me. There it was. Uh, he just said it was his local coffee shop. I'm kind of hiding the best thing yet. I love coffee. Here it is. I love coffee. This week I watched an interview. Uh, I don't know if anybody follows Epos Vox. He mostly does Windows and gaming and that, but he has a lot of OBS tutorials. Um, he has a lot of mic reviews in that. And he's a good character. He reminds me of uh, one of uh, kids that worked, or that was in our scout troop that lives uh, down the block here, Nate Simmons. Um, but he did an interview with the uh, creator of NDI Technology. That was pretty good. And what uh, the future of NDI might bring. Um, I use uh, NDI once I discovered it. Uh, I use it. it. It's what helps power my tablet and my screen views. And if it if I switch um, scenes, that was my laptop on NDI. The yeah, Epos has a very distinct voice. Spin Viking says Pep is best on this machine after some distro hopping. I'll keep it there till the end of support of 2023. <clears throat> Peppermint 11 is being brewed there, uh, Spin Viking, so. Um, we'll, f you know, just have to wait and see, but it's it's coming, it's, it's coming, and it should be pretty good. Steven still has it on his 32-bit laptop. Let's see, I'll post that interview.
That should be the link to the interview with um guys and his idea why he's <clears throat> he's just kind of happy to sort of give away a di i guess there is a question the way that it's bundled where someone bundled it up for lennox that that might not be you know completely legal and that's not really brought up in the uh, interview because like i said epos is a, a more of a big windows user he has used lennox and he does do a couple of reviews on lennox talks about stuff on it um hello country girl i'm doing well i hope you are too and hello cantor but um <clears throat> uh i i think you know there's coming out with new technology <clears throat> excuse me to use with ndi uh, like some capture cards and things like that, so that's going to be cool. Yeah, Vince, I, I haven't tried Ventoy yet, but I, I will. Um, I still have to, you know, uh, I might play around with it when I'm <clears throat> getting ready to install my SSD. So, as I showed everybody last week, I have a... <clears throat> I picked up a uh, Samsung 500 gig SSD for my desktop and uh, I was happy to, uh, to when um, I had downloaded one of the recent episodes of the hardware addicts and they were talking about hard drives and Ryan talked about Samsung so you know this was regularly 109 on sale for 79 and I think he said that the uh, like the higher number on this Evo eight sixty Evo, where I, um, uh, really uh, the higher the number, the better the SSD. But he talked about Samsung, so I was happy to see that or hear that because I listened to him. Yeah, back issues. Yeah, uh, Gnostic. My uh, last night. And still not great today, but last night was really bad. I was it put me in a surly mood. And I'm like I'm not, I'm not even getting on Biddle. Um, in fact, I I no offense to everybody on Biddle. I just I actually just closed and went and sat on the couch, turned on some TV, and crashed. So with that. If anybody would like to join and talk this morning, if you have uh, been here previously, you should have the meeting room number. Vince says uh, he's got a Samsung SSD in his HP Elite book right now. You won't regret it. Yeah, surly. I was just like, I was being a, 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 a Gnostic. I was like, F everything. There we go. For the Zoom chat. But, um, you know, and probably need about a day <laughs> to uh, in install this now. The, the, Installing the SSD is going to take seconds, basically. Installing Peppermint will probably, on this thing, I'd venture to say, take about five minutes. 
installing everything else that I have to do from, you know, all my programs and that, that's going to take a while. Okay, so I need to know who Tejas Jardinan is. And he just popped out. So, yes, I do have a waiting room. So you uh, Zoom bombers, if I don't know your name, you're not getting in. Can't I clone my hard drive? I don't want to do that. I've, you know, I've probably installed so much stuff on here um, and that I just want to go with a fresh install. I've tried some things and I know it's not totally wiped out. Yeah, Zoom Bomber, boom, slapped. Dragon says the sky but only peppermint seems to work smoothly on this machine. Good. Yeah, fresh installs with fresh hardware, as Nate says. That's the best way to go. Um I you know, and to be honest, I've never cloned a drive. Uh I just don't wanna swap it out. I want everything to be kind of fresh. Um I mean I've tried different things and I doubt it's all been purged out. Hey, Don, how you doing? Um, and I have quite a bit now that I have to back up. You know, I back up, but, um, you know, I have a lot of programs that I have to kind of reinstall. A couple of them uh, are a, a little redundant. Like, I have two GIMPs. I have the... the that version of GIMP and I have a flat pack and I mostly use a flat pack now because it works really well in fact I have five flat packs that I run that are working really good um, snaps you know regardless of what you think and I'm not going to get into a, a snap issue the reason why I like flat packs over snaps is that if the snap is not packaged with everything that you need like you get Compare the snap of GIMP to the flat pack of GIMP, and there is a big difference. Um, with the flat pack of GIMP, it reads like I had a bunch of scripts in that from my original GIMP, the dev version, and the flat pack reads it. The snap package will not. So, you know, that is to me the big difference. You have a script. I I um I know Brian's talked about a script and uh Joe um Collins has a script that I, I download it and started working with it. But I've never fully done it. But um yeah, I just uh I, there's not a lot of settings I particularly want to save. I do want, uh, you know, Peppermint has a lot of theming in there, but I'll be honest, it's not, you know, though, though it looks nice, I prefer, um, um, what do I have? What do I have? Oh, no. So I like the Adapta theme. I mean, I run Adapta. I like it better than Arc. Um, between the, the the grays and that, just kind of suit me. I mean, Peppermint's got some nice. Mark did some really nice things, but I prefer uh, Adapta. And uh, I've been using the Paper Icon themes. I like that. 
Yeah, Alphon says uh, Joe Collins is more than 100,000 subscribers. He should have had that a long time ago. Um, Joe is one, was one of the first, um, how should I say, uh, reasonable voices in Linux. You know, um, there were too many, you know, Linux sucked this, Linux this, Linux that, you know, and um, it was Joe Collins. Uh, it was called Carmine, Total OS Today, uh, was like the second I found. Um, you know, there were a couple, I think, that are now big YouTubers that were starting out then that were, I, you know, I won't say who, but they were a little bit on the negative side. Uh, but... Razor puts the black mate theme on pep. Works well with the peppermint gray icons. Yeah, Gnostic says that the background reminds them of these uh, old school corner stores. But weren't though this the best to get the best sandwich or coffee? Or how about those old-time candy stores? I agree with Spin Viking. He says Joe Collins is a great guy. Helped me get my PCs working with a few emails. Yeah, he's really good. I really like him. Now, Cantor's favorite theme is Dark Olympic. So for those that may be on Windows, like, oh, themes, what, what's, what's themes? Yes, you can change sort of Windows 10 theming, but it's not even throughout all of Windows 10. Like their dark theme? Uh, Linux, we can change theming and icons real, real easy. Um, with Windows 10, I think you could do a little bit more than you used to be able to do. Silent Robot says Nordic Darker is lovely. I'll have to check that out. But I am a big fan. I like the dark themes, the, the bright, you know, the eyes. It's like, uh, you know, the um, Sync 3 player that I have in my Ford as a daytime nighttime mode and i hate the daytime i hate the blue and the silver playing around with settings i found out now i can set it to dark mode all the time and i prefer that and I'm, i don't see it's not hard to see in the daytime i know i forget who it was that uh one of the follow one of my followers told me that he likes um the the um something like Zorin where you can the theme changes with you know if it once it goes past a certain time it changes to dark um but he likes using the light because of uh he you know it's it's bright you know he likes using it more in the fall winter times hello carlos said how you doing welcome to Rhetoris. Razor says, check out the Mate look. Material black, colors complete, desktop, works well at XFCE. Yeah, there's going to be a lot, of, a lot of nice dark themes out there. I don't know, I just, I prefer them. So again, if anybody wants to join outside of uh, Zoom Bombers, please do. Let's see. I just finished. Li I so now that I have a little bit longer drive to work, uh, I'm listening to more podcasts because um, it takes me about twenty about twenty minutes to get to work. So twenty minutes there, twenty minutes back. So I got forty minutes now more to listen to podcasts. So I just finished uh, the Linux Spotlight that Rocco did with Monica who's been in the Biddle Telegram group and also has a food geekery 
group because she likes to cook. And uh, you think we talk about food. All the guys that are in the Biddle group are also in the food geekery go uh, group. And we're talking about food and um, posting and that. But that was a, it was a good interview. Um, was listening to um, the Destination Lennox guys, uh, one of the uh, latest episodes. And I said, uh, Hardware Addicts. Uh, and um, Wendy had some good advice about some photos in their last episode. Don says he always does an image of the OS weekly, but he stores all his data on an attached server, so the image to be cloned is a lot smaller, as well as having up-to-date data available to all my machines. There we go. And then Rocco last night, they talked about another podcast. And I think, Vince, wasn't you that posted you had like 44 hours queued up in your podcast player waiting to play? And then I've been going on walks with my son, so I listen to him. And my son, he doesn't, he doesn't want to walk with dad, right? So he's way ahead of me. So I, I put on a podcast while I'm walking to. Taurus likes the all green and light blue are nice to him themes. Hello, we think of, we speak a cookery and there's Paul. So Paul, Paul M. From England, not to be confused with Paul, the bacon guy from Maine. What's on the food agenda today, Paul? Because I know you're always cooking something. Yeah, Cantor, I just back up my files that I've saved, I've created, um, you know, things like my music and my pictures. Um, as, as far as, like, backing up the image, I've not really, I've never really done that. Oh, so you're going to try the jambalaya with the cauliflower rice, Paul? Like, it's not bad, but you, you got to make sure that you don't cook the cauliflower right, the rice cauliflower too long with it. Um, it tastes okay. I, it's nothing wrong with it. You know, it adds a more, another veggie taste to it. But then the texture is like rice. But, you know, I, I, there's nothing, nothing that beats the taste of a good rice. I love a good jasmine rice. You know, so I, I don't do a lot of starch these days, but um, every once in a while I'll treat myself to some rice. Razor says, uh, this and solve Pepin program took about an hour. Yeah, I, I, I have to, you know, bring back all my stuff, you know, because I got to make sure that... Uh, with my OBS setups and all that, that uh, I got that backed up right. Um, it's one of the reasons why I didn't go and install this yesterday. I, I was struggling in mind thought yesterday anyway because my back was bothering me so much. I would have made some kind of mistake and probably wouldn't have got on this morning. Gnostic says, mmm, jambalaya, I miss Nola. Yeah, nothing like a good jambalaya. I think I do pretty good. Um, but what else? Um, come on, the door's open outside of Zoom bombers.
You had to use you know, so you uh, you're using chorizo in your uh, jambalaya. That should be pretty spicy. Although uh, andale sausage is pretty spicy. Cantor tried the Zorn menu plugin for XFCTA. Looks cool, but can't change the icon like normally do on the Whisker menu. So Cantor, so they they did a, a Zorn. There's a, a menu plugin for, from the Zorn team. Oh, you can't get Andale there, so Teresa will do. And, and there, we, we'll do a uh, smoked sausage. You know, um, we don't often get Angela sausage, uh, but because uh, I, I like a good smoked sausage as a snack, cut it really thin. Well, and especially after it's cold, when it's cold too, it's pretty good. Vince says he has a laptop that needs Win 10 on it. Did the install of Windows two weeks ago. Can't bring himself to now go and install all the drivers. Um. Yeah, but I mean, doesn't Windows 10 make it easier for the drivers now? It'll search the web. But the fact that you have to go search for them, right? So after I get this bad boy installed, I'm going to order, um, because my, my PEP laptop already has a, it has a Kingston SSD in it. So I'm going to order an SSD for my two other laptops. Just a little, probably Kingston, it's probably the little cheapy ones. Um, just to speed them up just a little bit. Although if you're doing distro testing, not hopping testing is it better to have a regular hard drive and not totally kind of rewrite the the ssd all the time oh you don't oh, so sleepy says he downloaded all the ones from the manufacturer so did you install their uh um like asus uh has um their download center for all the drivers for uh windows are you crazy you found a 20 gigabyte hard drive the other day while digging for parts I guess if you got a, you know, like a testing computer, that's perfect, right? Oh, Wimpy is scheduled a Rolly Rhino stream later on. Okay, we'll have to check that out. Let's take a look at this theme. That theme, uh... I don't really have an image of it, do they? Okay, I'll check that out. Thanks, Cantor. Qual says he also tried to install his SSD in the CD bay, but can't get the rattle screws undone. So what? Um, you mentioned earlier that you can't you can't get into your BIOS. Um, I mean, do you do you need to get in your BIOS to change uh, setting for it to read an SSD?
Paul said he made his jambalaya good and spicy. Is there any other way to have jambalaya? Steven Anderson said, Steve, where you at? Um, I'm in a coffee shop. Uh, uh, this is a, I'm going to say this is a coffee shop. It's near uh, Chris's, uh, the uh, radio um, museum that he works at. He says it's not far from him. Hello, Adam. What's up, buddy? Hold on, I gotta turn up the volume here. There we go. It goes, although, let's see, OBS is messing with the All right. Say something again. How's it going? There we go. Pulse Audio just likes to bring down the Zoom voice engine like crazy. Yeah. It's going good. Um. So yeah, Paul, the uh, jambalaya, if you wanted to do something different, oh wait, I was talking about the coffee shop. So yeah, um, so Chris uh, sent me this, it's down from his uh, museum there. I uh, didn't say what the name of the place was, or why he likes it, that's why I asked, but he sent it, he was one of the first ones to send it. But Paul, on the jambalaya, if you ever want something different too, just, you know, you uh, can make a jambalaya soup, the same way, you just add more chicken broth to it. And uh, make it into a soup and for those cold winter days. A little less, like if you're using rice, less rice so it doesn't absorb all that uh, liquid. Now, success, it's 10 a.m. Wake up time for Adam. Hey, low spec, how you doing? Welcome. Vince says now he has to get a snack thanks to Paul. Yeah, Paul's always cooking really good. So last night I did I pound, um, I sliced up uh, some pork loin, pounded it out, made it really tender, breaded it, fried it, kind of like a schnitzel. That was pretty good. Jambalaya soup, I must be nuts, Steve. No, they're actually our recipes. And you know, you, if you just want to, uh, like a little extra broth, but there are out recipes out there for jambalaya soup. Hey, Lamer, I'm not nuts, I'm crazy, but I'm not nuts. I'm all for good food. So, Paul says chili soup is good too. So, see, now we're talking about the more. It's all about food. But yeah, so if you're in the in the Biddle Telegram group, uh, check out, um, see if you can get into the Food Geekery group, um, run by Monica, and you'll find everybody that's pretty much in the Biddle group in the Food Geekery group. But now we don't have to take up for the middle group talking about food all the time. Um, and of course, you'll see um, Bill there a lot. Let's see. So you can't get into your BIOS, Kurt. Uh, you said, I need to change a setting to enable me to use the SSD in VirtualBox. Yeah, I know you got to do, you got to turn on virtualization. But I'll have to check out um, 
my Asus motherboard. I don't know if I have to change anything, but... And Steven Anderson says uh, maybe to pull your CMOS battery and let it, let it reset. All right, DeCantor, thanks for stopping by. Take care. Yeah, Paul says a lot of grilling talk and food geekery. Yeah. Sorry about that uh, phone call. That's okay. I was wondering if Mickey, I saw McGee in the background there. I was like, ah, jumped in, take over the stream. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Just chilling. Yeah. Rough Jeez. life. I know, man. What a what a hard life. I love that little guy, but he's something else. Yeah. So what's going on with you, Adam? Uh not much. Um I am actually back on the Linux after being off of it for many months. Pretty what, good. Yeah, what uh, with, uh Ubuntu? Or uh yeah, Ubuntu twenty oh four. The gnome? The gnome, yeah. Yeah, I um I actually that's the only one that once we started um the the testing or whatever. It's still on my uh testing uh laptop. I haven't changed it. I haven't installed anything else. Um I actually have been um liking gnome a bit more um it looks nice um still like with <clears throat> getting some of the extensions right um now someone mentioned maybe last night during the stream um you don't like extensions or it doesn't it doesn't matter yeah, to I, you or i no I, I just usually don't use them but like like ubuntu comes with you know some extensions on its own right mm -hmm. i'm perfect i'm perfectly fine with those they they work they do their thing but like I'm not the kind of person that's gonna throw like a million extensions into GNOME. It's not my thing. I mean, yeah, I there's... can use I can use vanilla GNOME, like yeah. no extensions at all, and I'd be perfectly fine. Um, what did I I I actually install maybe one or two more? Um, I think it had to do with changing some of the theming or settings. I can't remember. Um, I know a lot of people add the system tray back in. Yeah. And I hey, Ellie, how you doing? Kind of being being away from Linux for a while made me both appreciate and understand design choices in Linux a little more. Uh huh. Um, like ripping out the system tray. Kind of, it is kind of silly. Before it didn't bother me, but you know, having one in Windows and have even having one in the Mac, on the Mac and everything, you know, mm -hmm. it, it has its place. And just getting rid of it seems kind of silly, especially when you don't have like anywhere to go with it. You know, like if you if you had some kind of built-in replacement, like I know they wanted people to put like functionality in the dock icons or something like that, but no one did. So what do you do? Uh huh. Um, just little things like that. Uh, you know the the stability. I mean, Win Windows is not bad, but you know if I if my machine's been you know all, been booted and you know sleeps a few times and all that, it starts to get a little a little squirrely at times. And I was running the uh, the twenty oh four um, Windows version. And that thing was a Need, man, they need to work on their quality control. But WSL two is awesome. Hmm. But it's kind of kind of nice to be back. I went and uh, I still have I had a one terabyte SSD in here that I have Windows on, and instead of wiping it out, I just went ahead and uh, ordered it from Best Buy and went and picked it up. I picked up a one terabyte Samsung nine seventy Evo Plus. Like NVMe drive. Uh huh. So I got I got Ubuntu on that. It's a pretty fast, pretty fast drive. But 
So, um, what did you pay for your, uh, NV, um, E? Uh, Cause I know, uh, they were still, I was looking at them, um, and they were still like in a, um, I didn't look at all the prices, but I think for a 500 gig, I was seeing like $139. Yeah, I think after tax, it was like $202. So, like... So for those that uh, don't know what the GNOME desktop, I had just shown what it looks like. A lot different than, than Windows. But yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of surprised at how well, like, how much has changed. So I started using Windows primarily full-time back in, I want to say, like, end of January, beginning of February. And, man, just in that short amount of time, like, Linux gaming has improved so much. It's it's nuts. Like, some of, some of the games that I picked up on the summer sale, only, I think only one of them doesn't play on Linux, and that one's just, it's because of anti-cheat, or, uh, like, yeah, anti-cheat stuff, which is uh -huh. being worked on. But... Like man, like even even games from companies like EA that you'd never think would have any kind of Linux support, like Titanfall Two plays on Linux just fine. Like that's awesome, man. So great, and gaming's a big part of my life. So you know, I I do I do enjoy having that option. And then for the games that I can't play on there for anti cheat or whatever reason, you know, I still have my Windows disc. But, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I bought a couple new monitors a couple a few days ago. Um I had I had some LG 4K monitors and they were they were fine. I I liked them, but I I just I got kind of tired of all the scaling problems and stuff that you have not just in Linux but in Windows as well and high DPI is fine, but I don't know, not that great. So I replaced them with some uh Acer Nitro 2VX um series monitors they're 1440p uh, 144 hertz ips plays they're really nice everything's really smooth and responsive and the colors look great and i don't have to worry about scaling and it's pretty <laughs> awesome yeah i got a hp er25 and i like it it's it's a beautiful looking monitor in that and um i i had it to where my wife actually agreed that if i wanted another monitor I can get it, but it seems like monitors are like um, certain. All of a sudden, like I can't find this HPER even on Amazon. Um, and if you know, if I do find it on Amazon, they want a hundred dollars more than what I paid for it in the beginning, yeah. which I got actually direct. Uh, I ordered it from HP because at that, but uh, two years ago. I was looking around for I was looking at different pricing and it was still one of the best prices even on Amazon. Um but you know as I look at it because it, I'm not on this every day like it would be really great for streaming and that to have a second monitor. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how like when my wife gets up here to do her banking and all that if that would throw her off or you know. Oh yeah, yeah. You know. I mean, my son would probably just have a field day. It's, he's got his laptop going and his desktop, and my desktop going. And oh yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, I, I so I'm I'm starting to uh, I stop watching uh, Biddle, and I'm like, my I just I didn't want to lay down, but I went on the couch, turned on the TV, I started you know falling asleep, and I heard this kind of like grumbling, yelling, and pounding on the desktop up here. Boom, boom, boom. I'm like the heck are you doing he was working he was doing a class assignment online class assignment and his windows gave him a blue screen of death <laughs> <laughs> i just yelled out welcome to the windows world yep it's funny you, you know. mentioned that nessa actually had a blue screen i think two blue screens yesterday and i was like man like i said man they gotta work on their quality control yeah, I have to look at, I know on my wife's little Aces Vivio book, it, you know, I, I don't have to worry about the, 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 the Windows 2004 going through because it says it's not ready for her laptop yet. 
oh yeah the standby it's they're working on it right but i see it's in his queue for his and i gotta see if it, oh, it updated that but he will have steam running discord running uh chrome with i don't know how many tabs going on his laptop and it now is i mean it, it's a it's an asus uh g76 republic of the gamer we bought it for him at the time because it had the uh uh it has um an amd video card in it um you know so it was we figured he, we would get him and we paid like 1200 dollars for it yeah uh, so it would take them into the future a little bit, but now it's actually close to 10 years old. And you can't, I was surprised when I wanted to upgrade the memory on it for him that that motherboard will only technically maybe take six gigs of memory. You can add more. I got it to work because you can't, you have to take it apart to get the last memory. So I added to, to, uh, uh, what I got, I got eight gigs of memory. So the other two is still in there. So he's got 10 gigs of memory. I'm not sure if the Windows 10 reads it, sees it. I don't know if, mm -hmm. you know, if he's able to use it through the motherboard. Um, but, um, yeah, we may have to get him. I'm surprised it doesn't shut down on him at all <laughs> with all the stuff that he's got running on it. <laughs> you know, it, it's... Um, but you know, it, it was it's it's a good laptop. I mean, I think I I've only had to replace a hard drive once, um, and uh, he beats it up. He he takes care of nothing. I mean, this it's it, it, he never cleans it. The screen. I'm like, how do you see to that screen? <laughs> but then you know, and then so he'll have his his laptop going, and he's on, and he's got two. Chrome browsers open with like ten tabs on each one open, but you know the the like pep. Uh, so I'll look at memory usage, and with all that, it's only up to like four gigs of memory being used. Man. So on on peppermint, it's just I guess it's just not really a problem. But yeah, and he doesn't have everything playing, but every tab is almost a YouTube video oh, or yeah. it's some kind of audio. Yeah, that'll that'll be a problem. So we we'll probably have to look at updating, you know, his 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 laptop. Um, but they got some really nice ones out there. Yeah, I was looking at some, and man, they're expensive. <laughs> like, yeah, there's like this a... there's like this like nice low range mid and all of a sudden it just like jumps up and the, yeah. and, the, uh, and the, you know i guess depending on what 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 you need it for um probably won't necessarily he he does steam on there uh he has had some games but he doesn't use them all he mostly does um gary mods Gary Mod or whatever off Steam, and he's always he's making a game, is what he's doing. Um, constantly adding sprites and things to it. So, uh, it doesn't, but it has to be. It should be a, a good, strong laptop for him. Yeah, I, I'm I'm just surprised that that thing is just still rolling. <laughs> We were at, we went to a Costco a couple months back, a while back. They they had one of the newer Asus gaming laptops that looked really sweet. Oh, yeah. You don't remember the model? No. Um, but it had real nice backlit keys and um, it had 16 gigs of memory. I forget what kind of it had a um a video card I think you know an AMD in there um and it was it was another Asus it was an Asus they have um if you can find it there's a there's a laptop I think it's the Asus like Zephyrus G14 um it's a it's actually got a an AMD Ryzen CPU in there, but uh -huh. 
I think it's got a 2060 Max Q you can get in it. Um, see. Here, here it is at Best Buy. Um, hey, graphic, how you doing? 1350 for this model with a one terabyte SSD, 16 gig, 2060, and Ryzen 9. Um, but that's actually a a laptop that you can get a like really good battery life out of and everything. It's a pretty amazing piece of kit. But Did you say the G14? Yeah, Zephyr uh, Asus Zephyrus G14. Uh huh. Um, those are pretty great value because I mean you can get higher end stuff with Intel or whatever, but I don't I don't even think Intel's CPUs are really that competitive compared to this one. Uh -huh. This one's such a great value. But and this th it's thirteen fifty at Best Buy. You can yeah. probably get it cheaper on Amazon. But it's just a matter of having them in stock because they're pretty they're pretty hot items these days. Yeah, and the thing is it's for him it's gotta be sturdy, but this thing to carry around <laughs> Yeah, and that's the other thing. Oh the, my the, god, because the it's is much much lighter, much. Yeah. And it was very stealth looking, you know, when it was made. It looked like a, a like it was made off the stealth uh, bomber. Yeah. You know, the very gamer aesthetic. Yeah. yeah. That I know, looks I know those. I have an Alienware um R Alienware 15 R3. And it's uh it's very gamer, but also it's a little it's a little less gamer, but once you turn it on it has all these lights and crap on it and it's like, yeah, okay, that's a gaming laptop. <laughs> you turn those off, it doesn't look too bad, but Yeah, so you know, it might be a we'll have to look to see. It might be a Christmas present. Let's we'll talk to the wife. Yeah. They're not cheap. No, but it's 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 um, like I said it's lasted them ten years, and um, uh, we've only had one hard drive fail on it. Um, and like I said, for what he does to it, I don't know how it runs being Windows ten. Um, it, it actually, you know, what, what he'll like I said, he'll have Steam and Discord and. I don't know what else he's got going on there, and um, I mean it gets close. I mean I'm glad I upped because I think it had four gigs of memory originally on it, because um, it originally came with Windows Seven. It was a Windows Seven um, laptop, but it does seem I you know I gotta say it does seem that Windows is a little more efficient on memory these days than what it used to be. Because oh, it it hasn't you know uh, I'm like I I gotta see this like because oh, yeah okay let's compare this to Linux right and it was still like, with everything he's got going was around four gigs in that um I I I did that though when I updated his memory I I don't remember what it was with uh, his uh, his other you know when it was just four gigs but um. Yeah, it was just funny last night, him throwing a fit because of the uh, blue screen of death. Yeah. Gotta love it. So as you talk about gaming, I know we talked about it a couple weeks ago on that, but what 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 is, like, uh, do you have a favorite game? Or or just games, like, um, you, you, whatever mood you're into, that, that that's a game you go to, yeah. or... It just depends on what I'm playing at the time. Like, I mean, there are some that I can, you know, I can always go back to, and there are some that I play once, and it's like, okay, we're done. Um, I don't know. I mean, for a long time, it was about seven years, I played World of Warcraft. That was, like, my life for seven years. Um. I've been tempted to go back a few times, but 
kind of one of those like you can never go back kind of thing because like i can go back to the game but it'll never be like it was back in the day right it'll uh-huh. never be like it was when i first played it and uh you know that is what it is um as far as like games that i'm playing these days uh, i picked up doom eternal on the steam sale i've been enjoying that quite a bit it's a uh, it's pretty fun just you know blowing up demons and uh like it runs really well. I was think I was I was originally going to get it on Stadia. Um but then I decided to buy it on Steam because I saw on Proton DB that people like were having like it like it worked just fine. And I'm like, hmm, interesting. You know, some mm-hmm. people had problems, don't get me wrong. Uh-huh. But they're usually AMD users. But uh you know, some people have problems, some people don't. It's it is what it is, but I, I it runs flawlessly on my machine here on Ubuntu 2004 with my Nvidia card and all that. Like I am really astonished at how how much things have improved. It's kind of amazing. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, I usually just go like whatever kind of game I feel like playing at the time. Or something that maybe my friends are playing as well. Like if you know we're all playing the same game at the same time. Uh, I got into Overwatch a little more lately too. Uh, Overwatch. Are you familiar with Overwatch at all? Um, maybe very little. Uh, yeah, it's like a team-based kind of character-based shooter game. It's like a competitive online game. Um, but it's really fun. The the community is pretty toxic, but if you just ignore everybody in chat, then you're good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I, I've been enjoying Overwatch. It's it's pretty fun. I play it with a few friends sometimes, and I don't know. It actually so funny enough. Um, you know, I had been playing. Um, I had been playing Overwatch on Windows, and it actually runs better on Linux. I found that my oh, frame yeah? rates were just a little bit higher on Linux than on Windows. I was really astonished by that because the game's the game is one of those games that's like they optimize it so much to make it run on basically anything. And to see it actually run better with like DXVK and all that is pretty astonishing. I know the last couple of like spotlights when they're talking about com- they're talking about gaming. I've I've heard that mentioned a bit that there's certain games that have been playing better, more you know the window games have been playing better on Linux than they have, I mean, through Steam. But they're getting better frame rate in that. Yeah, and it's I don't know what it might be. Uh, I don't know if it's like the underlying system, you know, Windows being heavy and taking thing taking up things or whatever, but. I mean, it's it's kind of amazing. Yeah, I had my son load. You know, uh, I said check check out you know your your Steam on Linux. You know, um, and I, I let him. You know, each of us got a a profile on on the on the Peppermint desktop and. So uh, I have Steam on there already. So you know, he just needed to sign in on his and sign in on his Steam. And oh my god, I I I think he had like a hundred gigs of stuff that downloaded. It's like through you know through Steam from all yeah. his his games and that. It took it took like an hour. It was uh, at least, um, and I think he's used it once. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, and here I got I got the NVIDIA, you know, I got the video card and, and all that, and it's like all he uses it for is to watch his um, YouTube videos while he's doing other stuff on his laptop. Money like, well spent. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... No, it's, it's really amazing. Like, there's still some incompatibilities, like there are certain games that just aren't going to work because of like DRM or mm-hmm. anti cheat stuff. And that's just, you know, the nature of how it is right now. And it's kind of a bummer. And I know things are being worked on and 
I don't know. I, I, I really do think that if they can get easy anti cheat and battle eye working in Proton, uh huh, that a lot of people will come like a lot of gamers will come over. Maybe not a, you know, it won't be a huge number of like people in general, right? Like a percentage of people, but a large number of gamers I think would come over to Linux if they could play their their online multiplayer games. Yeah, I watched uh, one of uh, Dark One's latest um, um, comment videos about uh, a, a, a Windows gamer that finally gave up on Windows and came to Linux and had a lot of positive, very positive things about it. Um, and uh, yeah. to the point that Matt really had nothing negative to say about the review, but it was, you know, that was good. And and this person was talking about how, how well certain games are running uh, on on his Linux machine compared to now I forgot I think he did do Ubuntu, but um, um, yeah I mean adoption I guess, I don't know I, I I know I don't push that much for adoption you know it's it, it'll happen it'll happen you know it's uh, the, the more Windows mess messes up the more people are going to look for other other means than that. Uh, Gnostic, you, you said I'm not touching a newer lappy. It's going to have at least 32 gigs of RAM to 16 gigs of... What are you doing that you that 16 gig is limiting? Is it your games? I mean, even though like what I'm doing, uh, like putting together a video or something like that, or even right now, and if I bring up, uh, let's see, HTOP. So it zoomed uh, OBS, uh, browser window open, my desktop's under four gigs of RAM being used right now. And I have 16 on this thing. See on my laptop, so I, that's why I use both a laptop and a desktop to stream. So I it's have eleven gig. <laughs> eleven? Yeah. Well, you got a game going too, or? No, I got. I just got or, a bunch of oh. stuff open in Chrome, and you know, I got like Spotify open, and <laughs> Discord, Steam, Lutris, Telegram. So I got OBS uh, uh, doing NDI capture. I got, uh, this is where I'm controlling my uh, YouTube studio for the stream. And I have a, a browser open. And the laptop's only like two, less than two and a half gigs of RAM. And there's 16 gigs in the, in the desktop, too, in the laptop too. Although... Um, with the, the this laptop does get it's warm right now it's, it's you can feel it on both sides and the fans off to this left side i have but, um i have 16 in here right now but i actually have a kit of these up to uh, it's like 32 gig of this these memory but that memory's slower and so it uh not as good for like gaming and stuff. So I just went with less memory but faster memory. So I just have like four sticks of memory just sitting on my desk. Now six says games and other stuff I don't mention here in open chat, Steve. <laughs> so I will be right back. You know, okay. So I got yet another email from someone that has a video of me asking for $2,000 in Bitcoin. It's getting ridiculous. And I think for the fourth time in three weeks, my Amazon Prime account has been can uh, closed because of payment issues, which I don't have Amazon Prime. Uh, let's see, my Bank America account has been compromised and I don't have Bank America. Um, what other BS has been sent out? My my wife actually got one of those um, emails about you know we have your password and you know we have you on video. Um, 
And I'm like, honey, you're not sharing? What? You know, I got all the, so this is like about the sixth email I got about being caught on video. It's like, maybe I should, if that's the case, maybe I should start charging them, huh? Well, I'll raise your 2000 to 4000 You pay me for watching it. Uh, it, it's, it, it's insane. Um, I feel for the people that maybe fall for that. I mean, all you got to do is look at the email address it's coming from, uh, especially on like the Bank America. Uh, you know, I can't tell you how many banks I don't have closed my account or, or lock my account out because of my information can't be updated. Oh, hey, Linux Dabbler. How you doing? What about the extended war? Yeah. I get a call on a car I sold three years ago now. Kurt says he's given up looking at his spam folder. I actually looked at my spam folder the other day, and there actually was an email. It wasn't from the prince of somewhere in Africa. But it was someone who said her husband and her were rich and they're looking for good people to give money money to. Please reply to this email so you know we want to help people out. Is that okay? Uh, it's not, you know, it's all BS. I mean, I, I don't have any of those accounts, uh, Gnostic. You know, it's, it's, they're just fishing out there and they're going to probably hit someone that has an Amazon. Or I do do Amazon, but I don't do Amazon Prime. So I know it's bullshit. Um, and never once have they gotten my correct bank. You know, it's the, you know, Wells Fargo, it's Bank of America, it's Chase. Um, you know, the passwords that they use are old passwords, so I know that, you know, it's nothing that I ever used uh, or haven't used lately that I would never especially use on a porn site. Um, you know, uh, PayPal, you know, it's just uh, amazing what it comes to. And all they got to do, I guess, is get one or two people. Extended warranty on a 2005 Chevy Avalanche. Yeah, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Another thing, uh, it was... Uh, so, uh, you know, we've had some storms in the area. And uh, a couple years ago, these people called like three times a week. Um, Illinois Best Roofers. And if you look online, you cannot find Illinois Best Roofers. You can find the top 10 best Illinois roofers or Illinois Best Roofers, but you can't find a company named Illinois Best. And, uh, you know, oh, we're in your neighborhood. You've probably seen our sign on your neighbor's lawn. Uh, no. Well, we're doing a free inspection. We can come out tomorrow and check your roof out. I said, no. Well, why not? I'm not interested. Why not? Because you called me? Well, sir, how do you know about your roof? I said, I don't care. <laughs> you called me. I'm not having you come. If I want, if I think there's something wrong, I will call. I will call for three estimates and, you know. But I have not seen any signs in my neighborhood of Illinois best doing but when they call me they ask for my wife and then it's on my cell phone number I know uh, uh, cubicle Nate loves these people because he can he'll just talk to them they probably end up hanging up on him Twin Viking says the fun you can have with these dolts. I like watching those scammer file uh, videos, delete videos where they watch them squirm. Yeah, yeah. To have that kind of knowledge, you'd be able to turn it around on them and 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 wipe out their their network. 
Exactly. Vince says sometimes the easiest way is to look for spelling mistakes in those emails. I mean, get a spell checker for Pete's sake or the grammar. Um, the grammar's off, but I think they may purposely misspell or uh, because um, your spam checker might miss it. But you do, all you got to do is just look, like especially emails. So people that are out there if if you get these emails, do not worry. You if you even if you have that account, your bank is not going to send. It. Chances are your bank may call you, or if they send you an email, they'll ask you to go to the website. They won't give you a link. Uh, they won't ask you to update your information. You know, there's times where I think that I want to um, respond. I'm, a, I'm a, you know, even on Linux, I'm afraid to click on the link. But uh, if it's something to update it, you know, my name would be fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you know, kiss my ass. Sorry for the vulgarity, but yeah, they just piss me off. And apparently, I think um, some of the, like, especially with the Social Security, there's, you know, your Social Security has been locked out or you're going to, you know, or you get that, you know, that terrible robocall. Uh, you are going to be arrested for your whatever, you know, not filing Social Security. But they must be purchasing, they must be asking people to purchase Steam cards. Because all of a sudden, I got people coming in and uh, buying like $500 worth of Steam cards. And Steam, the vendor, has been blocking anything over $200. So at first it was Apple iTunes cards. Then it was, you know, Google Play. Uh, now it must be the easy ones that they can get money on. Yeah, the FBI call. But, yeah, this, this scams, especially now with people at, who are, now we're getting out, but when while people were at home, they just got really, really crazy. You had, Nate says he had to try to get them to send them Amazon cards, yeah. Or get these calls, you know, uh, you know, um, we get, I don't, they think because they um, mention women's breast cancer, you know, society or something like that, that your, your heart's going to melt and you're going to want to give out money to them. Um, you know, there are some good local charities, you know, um, you, uh, you know, I think in usually, although we didn't do it. This year, um, uh, we'll do collections at the registers for um, breast cancer. So I'll donate there because I know where the money's going. I, I haven't heard of half of these. You know, just because you mentioned breast cancer doesn't mean I'm going to give give to it. And then I'll also mention the police association, although. I can imagine those calls really dropping off right now because in this environment, who's going to um, donate to any police association? But if I'm going to donate to them, it's going to be a local charity or local, not some, you know, this whatever union. And it's the same guy. He's been doing it for years. But... So, but, you know, if, if most of us in the, you know, and most of you in the room that are chatting are very savvy and know that if you're just watching this and you are a Windows user, or even a Mac user, or you're just using your iPad or, or your Android tablet, you know, and look at your email, always look at 
where that email is coming from. If it's not a direct from Amazon or something like that, it may look like it because it will be like me.amazon.com. That's not Amazon. But if it's really bogus, just ignore that. Delete that email. You know, I've also got from, you know, I'm, I'm Xfinity, so I, Comcast, right? I get these emails. Your, your email account has been locked out because of information. All right, then how am I getting this email, right? I'm in Xfinity right now. I'm getting this email. How is it happening if I'm locked out? And you look at the email address that it came from, and it's not from like Xfinity or uh, Comcast support. It's ridiculous. Just delete those emails. Don't respond to them. You get these calls about Social Security or um, IRS. Ignore them. It's all BS. Because you have, you know, especially with the IRS, really, they're going to ask you to buy iTunes cards or whatever to to get you out of being arrested to pay for your back taxes or whatever. Really? Are you? And, and there are people that are naive. I have helped some older folks, and I won't say it's always just older folks. I had some young guy that he was buying, he bought like $400 worth of Apple cards and came back and said, oh, I was scammed. I want my money back. I'm like, I can't do that. You know, uh, you're, you're going to have to go through your bank and all that. And this kid was 24 years old, you know, and he fell for it. Nate says the IRS needs their music, too. There you go. Qual says my legit ISP said they would email me about my problem that my email is down. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, Chris Guyver, how you doing, mate? <laughs> Chris says my fallback, my financial plan is the 20 plus emails in a day in my Gmail spam folder tell me I have 12 to 20k each. Don't shatter my backup plan. Got it. Hey, Tony, good afternoon in Spain. How are you doing in Spain? How's things going over there for you? Back, wanted to eat some breakfast. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, we just uh, just uh, was we talking about uh, spamming and security and oh yeah, it's just uh, it's just crazy. Twenty twenty healthcare, yeah. Um, know all about that. You know, or getting that. Uh, you know, your 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 birthday's coming up, so it's time for you to think about um, Medicaid. You know. And I yeah. am cool. I do have to, you know, it's to where I guess I got to sign up before, <laughs> you know, you got to sign up before you're eligible in order to be eligible when you sign up, mm. which is, but those are only a few years away right now, you know? So, but I would say, you know, okay, you know, that generic, my, your birthday is coming up. All right. It's three months away. <laughs> And I would tell him, I'm not, where, where are you getting this information? I'm not even close to Medicare age. Click. Kind of surprised no one else has joined us. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to yeah, top us. us two good looking guys here. Fair. That is fair. Yeah. You are not wrong. Spin Viking says, I must say, deleting my Hotmail account, I don't get these spam emails anymore. Yeah. But yeah, I, I have to laugh at, you know, it's like, again, um, uh, though, I try to be diligent and use different passwords, and I, I'm terrible. I always forget <laughs> sometimes what that password was, and I gotta reset it. But like where I've been, you know, getting these, uh, you know, it will be the password as the header, right? 
and now that I have your attention, we have your password and we know where you've been and we have a video, you know, and blah, 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 even a porn site and all that. Well, it was a password to Rhapsody and that I don't, I changed it when they informed us that they had been hacked. So that was a couple years ago. And that was the only site that that password was ever used on. So I know it's BS. I don't use passwords for porn site. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it's like, wow, you know, and it, my wife had gotten, you know, kind of the same thing. And um, it, it's, it's they just send them out. And I wonder if, you know, there may be someone that's kind of like, okay, I oh, I got caught. But it's like, maybe I should charge them, right? Yeah. Oh, you want to charge me 2,000 Bitcoin? Here, I'm going to charge you 4,000 for stealing my material. And it's always, and these emails are coming from an Outlook account, uh, you know, So Vince so happily one day sent me the finger in a, 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 a was it ASCII text? A, a, a S C I I whatever. And uh, so I copied that and I sent that back to them. But it's always a different person. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's, but it saddens me when, I, I mean, I haven't had a case in a while. But uh, a couple of times when I had some um, elderly folk come in, especially this one lady, and she's looking, I'll, I'll never forget, I went to another store for a meeting, and this lady, was, and I walk around with her cell phone going, I'm trying to find the iTunes cards, and it just stopped me right there, you know? And I said, ma'am, you need help finding the iTunes cards? I said, I don't work at this store, but I am a manager for the company, and, um, you know, I said, is someone telling you that you have to buy these cards? And she looks at me like, you know, you know, and it shakes her head. Yes. And I said, it's a scam. Hang up on them. And she was afraid to, but it was someone that was claiming to be her grandson. And she said, no, it's not my grandson. And it was a, you know, a, uh, one of those IRS scams and she fell for it or was going to fall for it. But, you know, I, I said, we're going to, I'm going to, I told the, I took the phone. I said, can I talk to the person? And she said, sure. And I said, you're going to stop bothering this lady. I got your phone number. I'm going to report it to the police. She's not going to give you your money. You know, well, it's, I'm a grandson. It's personal business. I said, not anymore. It's not. And I hung up on him. I said, there you go, ma'am. Don't. If that person calls back, don't. If that number comes up on your phone, don't answer it. You know, and she was like in her eight. You know, it's like. You know, but she she fell for it. You know, it's like people believe it just because you got an email before or just because you've seen it on um, the internet, it's true, right? It must be true. <clears throat> Why would they lie? What would they have to gain? Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, what gets me, there was this 24-year-old kid that got scammed. I mean, you would think that he would be the savvy one. Um, and also, you, oh, you gotta be careful. So this one lady, um, saw a charge on her she does have she does have apple and uh, you know iphone and she does have the apple account and she does use their their store and has bought a game but she saw a charge like a well, 14 something dollar charge on there that she doesn't remember doing well she looked up online for an apple account or something like that mm -hmm. and it was like one of the first links but it was a scam you know they must have paid for that link you know you can pay for ads on google mm -hmm. and she used that phone number so <laughs> she reached out to them to the scammers you know so that's why she thought it was legit but she had already bought she had bought a 200 dollar worth of uh, itunes cards but her uh, american express had after the $200 blocked her out, she couldn't buy no more. And uh, I, you know, um, I overheard it and I said, ma'am, I don't mean to be buttoning into your business. Is this is what's going on? And she's like, yeah. I said, either hang up on that, hang up on that person. I said, it's BS. You, you know, now you need to call American Express because now you got to block, because they so apparently blocked and they did. They, she got through their security and they noticed, uh, you know, the charge and they figured that it was bogus and, um, 
you know, they they uh, blocked her account. Um, they were able to reverse it, but you know, had you know, it's just that we're we're kind of trained to watch out for that now. Uh, but she thought it was legit because she did a search and found it, and it wasn't. I'm like, it, and I, I, um, clicked on the web page, and surely it wasn't uh, an Apple. It was, you know, um, uh, I think what she did was not every. She she saw the phone number. She called the phone number, but it's actually a, no. I so it was a link about it being a scam phone number, not to use it, and she used it. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's not just so, but it just saddens me when I see the older people getting affected by this. Uh, we had someone earlier this year at my other store um, with, uh, well, actually, it wasn't iTunes cards, but it was, uh, I forget what uh, card company it was. And sure enough, it was, it was a scam. It was an older gentleman. So people still do fall for it. But, you know, just to, to be careful out there. Nasik says, iTunes is a scam. Someone bought me a few iTunes cards and they wanted me to create an account just to download them. Yeah. reading the chat haven't been paying attention to it yeah i've been on and off i know it gets hard you know especially when you're when you're yap when like me yapping away <clears throat> you know i don't i don't really get like junk mail or spam or anything but i just get the robo calls everything else is pretty under control I mean, yeah, occasionally I'll get, you know, like, hey, well, you're pre-qualified for this or whatever. And like, yeah. Oh, man, right after I bought my car, I just got swamped with those things. That's the thing. Right after you buy like a car or buy a house or something like that, you just get inundated with offers for every damn thing. And Yeah, um, I, 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 yeah, um, I'm, I, I. My last few cars, I hadn't got anything, but dealer must have, you know, like sold the the um, email that I got a new car. Yeah. But every dealer in the area is sending me an email about a new car. It's like I just bought a new car. What do I want another one for? You know? Yeah. This one's gonna last me. My my last escape lasted over twelve years. This will be my last car until retirement. I mean, and past that, if this lasts me till twelve years, it will last me till I can't drive anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, if I can get to 60, you know, 75 on this car, I'll be happy. It's a beautiful car. But that Escape, that uh, to the 20, 2007 I had, 2008, it was a beautiful, I mean, like I said, 12 years. And I did have to have a trans replace on it and some other stuff. But um, I, I just love that Escape. Right? Yep. And my wife will be next once, uh, so we pay off, uh, We, you know, uh, her cars now. She's got a 2013 and they're looking for resale on a 2013 Escape because the 2013s are, I guess, like the resale value on those are really high. Everybody's looking for a 2013. I don't know why, but of course, you know, you know, we can give you such a deal and sell you a new car. It's like no. So once my car is yeah. paid off, then she'll get her new one. And that's how we work. They it. only have one payment. Yeah. Yeah. And we actually, I, I wanted to go a little bit longer. I probably could have gone a little longer. She's like, 12 years is long enough on this thing. Because we, we went for a while without any house payment any, and any car payment. So that was nice. We were able to sack some money away just in case. Oh, yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah, um, I'm, uh, I, I'm pretty happy with my, my Civic. Uh, but it does have an issue that Honda cannot... I guess they they basically said that they they can't fix it, just like a design problem. Oh. Um, but they gave us like a extended on our extended powertrain warranty and stuff. But mm-hmm. 
Uh, it's to do with the turbo in the colder months. I mean, granted, you know, Georgia doesn't get super cold, but when it's colder, um, whenever you first start the vehicle, you can get uh, a basically oil dilution. So some of the gas doesn't get burned off properly and goes into the turbo with the oil and mixes in. So, uh, you know, you would, the, the only real solution is to just get, oil changes every like 2000 miles instead of 3000 and that kind of thing. And, you know, a higher octane gas, which costs more, you know, that kind of, this it's kind of a pain. Uh -huh. um, but other than that, I love my civic, you know, I love, you know, it's a great vehicle, but I'm thinking maybe depending on what, you know, what happens the rest of the year, I might trade it in for something else, but I don't know what else yet. Yeah, there's almost not a bad new car these days. Um, although, like, uh, the last couple of vacations I was on, uh, so when we were at uh, Orlando and rented a car, it was the Toyota Corolla, and I, you know, heard great things about the Corolla. Mm -hmm. I could not get in this car. And then, and then it was a, a 2018, and the radio looked like it was from 10 years oh, before, you yeah. know. Toyota is so far behind on their, like, technology inside their cars. They, they make the, like, engineering-wise, the cars are bulletproof. But you won't find a lot of the special cool creature comforts that a lot of other people have in their vehicles. Yeah. Yeah, I had, pretty boring with that. Uh, and then when I, what did I have when I was in, but I, yeah, I couldn't get, I, I um, Joe Panico told me, you know, uh, because my my back sometimes I, it takes a, a bit to get in and out you know he says what you need to do is like turn your back to the seat kind of sit that way and then turn yourself then around turn your just that yeah. like yeah you know, it's like you know the old man way and uh, that was i can do it but it's like it was it was horrible and then i, I did i have a whenever i get into someone else's vehicle that's how i get in I sit down like sideways and then, you know, kind of knock my shoes to get stuff off my shoes uh -huh. and then just swing my feet in. If it's my car, I don't really care, but I just don't want to get crap yeah. in other people's cars. So that's usually how I get in. Except for my dad's Jeep, which I have to like do this rigmarole of like throw my leg up because the thing is sits so high. I have to like climb into it and I'm just like. Yeah, and that's what that, that, that my last, my 20 oil. Eight escape it had plenty you know it was not real high it was you know it was easy to get into i had plenty of room um it had a v6 in it and um i get on the highway and still get 25 plus miles to the gallon um pretty good you know and i'm i'm not light-footed on my my accelerator i'll tell you that much and <laughs> it, it if it, it was raining out and, and starting out from a, a stop light it, it always it so much power to always spin um i can't complain about you know the the new escape is a one of their eco four it's one of the larger the four cylinder turbo yeah and uh it's got some good pickup and actually now that i'm driving you know i'm driving 20 minutes now in the morning my gas mileage has actually um I know my gas usage is going to go up because I'm going farther, but my gas mileage is coming down. I'm, I'm like averaging 30 miles to a gallon where when I was 10 minutes away, probably comes by the time the car warmed up and I finally, you know, 10 minutes or my, my gas mileage was about 20, 28, you know, so I'm mm -hmm. getting about two miles more to a gallon going further because actually one stretch of the road, even though there's some lights, I almost hit every green light going down. And it's 40, 45 miles an hour uh, for four miles. So I'm getting better gas mileage being farther away from home. <laughs> so, so go figure. But, you know, the car's got a little more time to warm up and all that stuff. Plus now it's okay, it's springtime. So it's got the, you know, you come to a stop and it's got the mm -hmm. auto, it turns off the engine. And uh, you left off the gas, and it starts up. The first time that started happening is like, wow, this is kind of weird. Now, I, I, you can uh, turn off the auto uh, turn off, like in the winter when your heater's running, that, or if the air conditioner's on, 
so it doesn't turn off. So that adds to the gas mileage too, especially when it's nice out in the morning. I got my sunroof open and all the windows open, and so the engine will turn off. I expect that when uh, when winter comes back, that the gas mileage will drop. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like having a, a nice, like, small, fuel-efficient commuter car kind of thing, but I, I definitely see, like, how much a a truck would really be useful for me. Yeah. Just because, I mean, there have been a few times where I needed a truck, and it's like, well, i got to borrow my parents' vehicle or something like that, and it's just such a pain. But at the same time, like right, so like now I'm not commuting to work because I'm working from home. And if I can kind of, you know, work that into even after Corona and all that's taken care of, like if I can work that into my normal work schedule, like maybe go in the office one or two days a week. Then suddenly a truck makes a lot of sense. Uh huh. Um, but trucks are expensive, man. Yeah. <laughs> Dabbler says, if I can quote my dad, who's a pretty large fella, I'm a big guy. I want a car I can get in, not one I have to put on. Yeah, you'll see those little, real little things, you know, and, and uh, my son can use them as roller skates. You know, I tease him about his big feet, although we're, we're both about uh, our feet. I have to wear, like, because uh, mine is, are wide, I have to wear, like, 13s. Jeez. Yeah. Although, because uh, uh, it's hard to find, a, I think 12 or even 11 and a half would be fine for me. But my feet are wide. Uh, him, uh, he's just got big feet, I'll say. You know, the Navy called, they want you to power their aircraft carrier. <laughs> <laughs> are you telling me I got big feet, Dad? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but he's a big kid. He's just almost 6'2", 6'1", 6'2". Solid dude. He's getting all excited, you know, Illinois slowly opening up. Although we'll see because the rest of the country now has opened up too fast. Um, he's dying, you know, yeah, he was dying for the health club to open up. Because I know he's missing that. Uh, he's not working out enough, taking him for walks and that. Although he has pulled out his mom's little weights and, you know, and he'll do belly crunches and stuff like that. Johan says his 1991 Corolla is built like a tank, but lots of rust. I got very lucky. My my uh, my earlier Escape did not have a, maybe a, a, a spec. I never had a rusting problem with it. But I don't I don't fall for that rust proofing because all the cars are coated already. And for this aftermarket rust proofing, they have to wedge in and get in where they're not supposed to, and they open up areas. Uh, made the mistake of having one of my cars rust proofed, and it rusted like a bucket. Um, I think my wife's 2013 right now is barely showing any signs. She had a, a, a Windstar van. She'd love to go back to kind of like a van. Um. Mm. Which is kind of funny for her. She's like a little. Um, that was her first new car, the, the Windstar, and it worked out perfectly for family use and that. Uh, but it rusted. She called me one night. She was coming home from work. She had a flat tire, so I went to change it, and I'm jacking up, and I'm watching the frame just like, you know, start to <laughs> buckle as I'm, you know, it's like okay. We go look for a new car, you know, within the next month or so. We got her, her 2013. It was, mm -hmm. it was that safe. It was so much rust. It's bad enough the, the body was rusting, but when your frame is rusting like that, that's kind of uh, scary. Steve Anderson said, my bucket's got a hole in it. I love this song. Since, yeah, I did Hoon Ricer cars. 
What's that, Vince? Uh, hooning is like driving, um, like driving crazy. You know, like oh, driving irrationally. And then ricer cars are the Japanese Japanese yeah, cars. Yeah. Okay, like uh, uh, Fast and Furious was that three yeah. uh, Tokyo Drift. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I drive. I'll, I'll you know, I'll make sure there's no other cars around, and we'll go out and I'll start like swerving him. My son is yelling at me, "Dad, what are you trying <laughs> to do? Kill me?" I'm like, "What?" You know, and uh, you know, I'm such an evil dad. I swear to God. Don't you don't you care about my life? What life? Oh. Good times. So I'm going to go ahead and roll out of here, Steve. Okay, well, thanks for stopping up. by, Adam. Yeah, I'm going to get off in a few minutes here. We're at the two-hour mark. i got to decide if I'm going to make pancakes or waffles so my son can have his blueberry syrup, homemade blueberry syrup. Sounds so, good. So always appreciate when you stop by, Adam. Yeah, definitely. We'll see you soon. All right, take care, man. Bye, buddy. All right. So what else? We got a few minutes here. Um, so I got a three-day weekend next weekend. We get to take Friday off because of Saturday being the Fourth of July. Nice. So that's probably going to be this project. Um, I'll probably you know put my peppermint on it, but I might use it to test out Ventoy and and uh, see what. Uh, Looks, I, I did boot into, the other week I had to do FSCK, so I had to use a live um, USB, so I still had Ubuntu 2004 on it. And on this desktop, with this screen, I gotta say, Ubuntu looked really sweet. Even my son went, wow, dad, that looks nice. Now, I don't know if I would give up my peppermint for Ubuntu, um, there's a couple things about it. I really, I, I do. I am liking the GNOME desktop more than I have in the past. But, you know, some of the extensions and things I want to use, I, I'm not uh, too thrilled about it. Um, again, you know, we have we have the guys working on uh, PEP 11 for those that you know it's it's still being brewed. So give it time. It is coming. Say that. And. Uh, those that are watching that are on the team, I, want, I thank you for your, your help with that. A lot of people stepped up, and that's a great thing. Vince says, I didn't actually realize Hooning was a regional lingo. Well, we all have regional lingos, right? You know? Aggressive driving is Cobb's lingo. Hey, Carmine. Yes, at the coffee shop today. So this was a view from um, a coffee shop in Connecticut where Chris Kelling, uh, the, where the radio museum is. And it's a shop near there. Let's see. And add the uh, background for the bedroom back in or this coffee house. Kind of like the darker background a little bit better, but thanks to Chris for sending that. But you didn't tell me why you like that. So Chris, if you watch this, tell me that why you like the coffee from there. Dabbler says, uh, it's awesome, my dude. Enjoy that weekend, about my three-day weekend. I had the fourth off last year, but no so luck, such luck this year. All right, country girl, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate the support.
Yeah, DT just went live, so everybody's gonna go transition over there. Carmen says, next week, join me. My dad sent me a bunch of songs from Italy. Beautiful Italian soundtracks. All right, sounds like a plan. Maybe I'll get some Italian roast for that day. Not my favorite, but, you know, get in the mood or a good Italian wine. Depending on the kind of day. But... Is my green screen blue? No, it's, it is green. Um, the back side is blue. Leo man. You can do either or. Um, yeah, it's, I'm, 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 I'm having fun with it. A little bit to set up. I mean, not too bad. It's one of the folding ones. So I can portable, be portable with it. And, um... I think, uh, or if you notice, like when I turn sideways, I'm thinking the um, speaker picks up a reflection of the green, so it kind of disappears when I turn my head like that. And then you can see the cords a little bit disappear. But otherwise, it's, it's pretty good. I do have to zoom in a little bit on the camera. I mean, this thing's pretty large, if you would see it, but camera angle-wise, it... it it's a you know it's a wider field of view so it picks up more so it's actually right at my back yeah vince are you yeah you didn't mention it or did you mention are you feeling better this evening yeah, and you should get some rest buddy i know you're back to work tomorrow Dabbler. Thanks, Dabbler. I really like the addition of the green screen. It looks nice. Yeah, it's it's something to fun, you know, to have fun with and and do, um, you know, a step up on on the, on the streaming. A plastic table shirt, yeah, you know, a green one. But I wanted something that was sturdy that wouldn't blow because I actually have my ceiling fan going. I don't know if it would kind of like wobble. Um. Actually, even though we got the air conditioner on, this is one of the bedrooms that don't get air conditioning really well. So I actually have a fan on behind me too. So I wouldn't want that to blow, uh, blow around. Uh, but it, yeah, it, it's it's fun. It's it's doing something different. Again, you know, if you guys are at one of your favorite coffee houses, especially if it's independent and you're inside picking up, take a picture of the wall or some sitting area. You know, try not to get maybe their branding and that in there. And send it to me, and I'll do a different uh, uh, coffee house each each week. Um, Lamer sent we one of his. I, uh, a couple of them are from the outside. Kurt sent me one, so we can pretend that we're outside. But uh, yeah, it, it's fun. Um, I also want to, and after I install my new system next week, I want to work on a different kind of look, maybe with um, uh, I saw an idea that looked pretty cool uh, I watch a lot of OBS um, ideas on YouTube it's uh, uh, pretty pretty cool and I posted the link uh, if you want to learn more about NDI and the creator of NDI watch the ePost Vox um, video I think this was it I forget which one I pasted it on Oops. Hopefully the stream just didn't uh, disappear. All of a sudden uh, YouTube closed on me. But anyway, well, with that, we'll call it a, a day.
have a good morning good afternoon good evening or wherever you are from always i appreciate your support and showing up on uh sunday vince get some rest i hope you're feeling better buddy um you're on the mend all right buddy you're on the mend uh so and en en enjoy the start or the rest of your day um be cool be good to each other take care of yourselves um still be safe um in all this covid stuff and uh everybody be good so i want to thank you for stopping by Thanks for watching. Give me a chance, like and subscribe. Blah blah blah. And everybody have a good good day now. Take care. Bye.